Hi guys, good morning. In this video, we're going to see the problem successful pairs of spell and potions. It's a pretty easy problem, but an interesting one to actually make you learn a lot. So let's see the problem statement itself. Uh, you are having two positive integers array, spells and potions of length n and m respectively, where spells represent the strength of the i th spell and okay, potions represents the uh, strength of the j th portion. We just know we have some array called as spells. We have some array called as potions. No worries. We are also having an integer success. A spell and potions pair is considered successful if product of their strengths is at least success. Which means that spells of I, which means spells is an array, right? And potions is an array. Is an array. So any one element, any one element, the product of them is called successful when their product is more than or equal to success, which is given in the question. We have to return an integer array pairs of length n, the array which we need to return, they named it as pairs, no worries, we can name it anything, but it should be of length n and what it should return is that each element of that array pairs which we need to return is the number of portions that form a successful pair with the i th spell so basically what i will do is i will grab every spell we have a spell array i'll grab out every spell and i'll check for this spell right here how many potions are there which actually make a pair which is successful so for every spell i need to return how many potions are there which actually make a successful pair with that spell so basically we know okay for each spell i need to find the number of potions which are having successful pair and so basically for one spell i have all these options to look to, to look actually like look at okay i have this potions array and i need to check what all potions give me a successful pair if you see what we have to find is spell of i which means okay for this spell my spell of i is fixed I need to find all such portions and success is already fixed. So for a particular spell, my spell of I is fixed, my success is fixed. So I can easily find what is the possible value of portions. So my portions, it can have a possible value of success upon that value of spell. So for example, for in this case, when I take the spell, as 5 and success is already 7 I have a particular value okay my portions it will have a value greater than or equal to 7 by 5 for that particular spell which means my portions I can grab all the values which are more than 1.4 and as we know that are actually numbers are absolute integers so I just grab all the portions which have the value more than equal to 2 which means 2, 3, 4 and 5. All this out of this portions array, all these values between 2, 3, 4 and 5. Which means greater than equal to 2. All these are possible. So I can easily say, okay, I am good. For my spell of i, which is 0, i is 0. So the spell is 5. I can easily return and say the successful pair it forms is nothing but 4. As you can see in the problem, it's nothing but 4. So now you will say, Aryan, okay, it's, it, it looks pretty easy for every spell. I just go and check. Okay, I'll just firstly find out uh, what is the position's minimum value, which means, okay, I'll just find out how many values, like if for, for, at which value it should be greater than, then I'll know it is 2. Then I'll just go on in this position's array and check, okay, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the values which are greater, I'll just grab them and I'll just return the answer. Total. I'll say, it looks nice, but if you go and look at the constraints, then n is 1 e 5, which means number of spells are 1 e 5. Number of portions are also 1 e 5, which means for every spell, if you go and check in this portions array, you can't do it. So for every spell, you need to find number of such good successful portions in either O of 1 or O of log n. Now think of something that you can find for each spell. Okay, for each spell you know that the portions should be greater than equal to 2. 
which means you know that okay it should be greater than or equal to a fixed amount so you just need to find all the values number of values which are greater than or equal to this fixed amount greater than or equal to which means all the values which are more than it always increasing you remembered something about binary search what it does is whenever you want to find something in an array where it is always increasing so i can just find a location inside an array by using a binary search and it will land me to it, it can land me to a location let's say two so basically if this array already it is sorted but let's say if it had not been so i can easily sort this array and bring out a one two three four five if by any chance i can land it to a location right here so i can just simply say and minus this position i can easily get the number of elements which are more than equal to two as simple as that right so to land at this location we can easily use a binary search because after that we know it's already sorted so actually it's actually a standard problem of binary search which means number of values greater than or equal to a particular number in an array it's a standard basic problem in a binary search although in the last video also we told exactly the same thing so if you can just go and watch the last video it will be very helpful for you guys but as we know as we as we saw like we we never knew about what is binary search and what will happen in it but we saw okay we need the positions which are which are more than equal to two which means which are more than the fixed value which means uh, all the elements which are more than two so all the elements which are more than two so if i sort it if i sort it by anyhow then i'll get and i'll get a location let's say two so all the elements after it will for sure be more than equal to two so it is always better to actually sort it and find this location and finding this location in a sorted array is nothing but a binary search that's the reason we're applying a binary search so we can just sort the array apply the binary search and we are good to go let's dry run on this example one very quickly spell is five for this spell my success is always fixed I get my positions, which means, okay, what is the possible value of positions? It's more than equal to, I'll get a 1.4, but I need to take a seal value because 1.4 is not possible. Then I'll just grab number of such numbers by just a lower bound, which means position of n will point me to the last location and lower bound it's in C++, but in Java and Python also I'll show in the code example, but it's just pointing to the location. Okay. It's just pointing to a value, which is greater than or equal to two. It just, it just points me to this. Although I have marked here indexes, but it's an iterator, right? It's not index, it's an iterator. So uh, I, although for the simplicity and understanding, I have marked indexes here. So five minus one will give me four, which is the four values, which are greater than or equal to two. For, so for the spell five, my answer is four. For next spell, which is one, I'll just grab, okay, what is the possible value of positions? It just says, okay, it should be greater than or equal to seven. Then I just go, oh, seven it will just point to end which means end minus this lower bound which actually is zero so i'll just get for this spell one my number of such positions will be zero i'll just grab the next spell which is three i'll get okay what's the position of j which is the possible value it is saying greater than or equal to three then i'll just grab okay it just points to the value three it points to my end which is this so i'll just grab the number which is three, four, and five. I grab these three numbers and I'm good to go. So I'll ultimately for every spell, I can just get the answer in O of log N. My spells are N. I'll get the answer in O of log M and ultimately I can return it in an array. So simple, as simple as that. Firstly, we sort this array. I'll show the code every in C++, Java, and Python. All are same, but just a slight modification of how you find the lower bound. Cool. Firstly, we sort because we have to actually apply binary search. We can't apply binary search or kind of location of an element without sorting. So we sorted, then we did on every spell because for every spell, I need to find my answer. Then I find, okay, how much position is actually needed? As I showed you guys, right? I need to find, okay, what is the position needed? I just find that position and then I'll just check by using a lower bound, okay, what's the location of that position needed in actually my positions array. And then ultimately I just reserve, I just return the, this whole difference, which means from end to this particular location. So to get the number of elements, which are more than or equal to the particular position, sorry, 
ocean needed and ultimately I return. Same in Python, it's just that uh, we use a bisect lift and same in Java, it's just that we have to make a map and we have to use a map ceiling. But if you are not, if you don't want to use the inbuilt library, then you can use exactly the same code of logic what we applied in the last video, in the last video, yesterday's video, I'll also link in the um, cards also. So you can j just go and watch that. In that exactly I showed what is the generalized, most generalized code of binary search which can be applied in any question. Although I discussed the exact same question yesterday also, the exact same code was written yesterday also for every language we saw. But here is just that, okay, I'll just, firstly, it is the function which will grab me the valid position. Here, what I was grabbing with the help of lower bound, this position, lower bound position, I just grab with this function, valid positions, which is this function. So just do a binary search, a standard binary search. If you have not, just go and watch. If you don't understand this, just, just go and watch that video. It has explained exactly with the dry run of every example with a pure clarity. And then here, uh, we just go on to every spell. We find the valid position, which means the location of that to element, which should, be, which should be more than equal to that required element, position needed. Uh, ocean needed and then I just do a ocean size to actually reach the end and minus that required position it's the difference it's the number of elements which are more than or equal to portions of that portions needed and ultimately I just push back in my result for every spell and ultimately I return that complexity is as simple as that we sort the portions array for every of this spell I just iterated and did a binary search by search is not like nothing but putting half, 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 half every time. Thus, it's O of log N. Log M for every, it's for portions binary search. It's for to iterate on every spell. For every spell, I'm iterating on my portions. For every spell, I am actually doing a binary search on my portions. It is for that O of N, N log M. And M log N for sorting that portions. O of N to actually store that uh, result and like return that result, which we actually have to return. The codes for using the inbuilt library for every language is there and the code for using without inbuilt library for every language also there. I hope that you guys got it. And if yes, then to the right button and see you on the button. Goodbye, take care.